What's up everyone, Dartblade here with my video review of Metal Gear Online 3 and the FOB sections of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Back in my Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain review, I claimed that I would be doing a separate review for MGO3 and the FOB sections of the game. This was mainly because Metal Gear Online 3 was not available at the time of the main game's review. Metal Gear Online 3 is an add-on of sorts to Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain that focuses on competitive multiplayer modes between teams of up to 16 players. It was released worldwide of October 2015 to consoles with a PC version coming early 2016. The mode was delayed from being released with the main Metal Gear Solid 5 game to allow for the PC version of Metal Gear Solid 5 to be released at the same time as consoles. There is no real story behind Metal Gear Online 3. Two teams represented by solid and liquid names battle each other over various locations. Whether this is a team training exercise or small skirmishes, it's not clear. During some matches you can play as Snake or Ocelot but this has little clarity to if there is a story behind the online mode. The FOB or forward operating base sections of Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain however do have more of a backstory. Enemy players representing rival PFs are either trying to steal staff or resources from your mother base's FOB. You can also reverse the roles by having you try to infiltrate their FOBs. It's a nice touch and every player you will be coming across will be treated as an enemy PF, while in their game you will be the enemy PF. It could be considered a bit like a Dark Souls or even a Watch Dogs invasion mode. The gameplay of both Metal Gear Online 3 and the FOB modes are smooth and functional. The FOB sections functions pretty much the same as Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. You prep Snake or a member of your team as you prepare to infiltrate the enemy base. These FOB missions are similar to Mission 22 in Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. The only difference is that if you get spotted during your infiltration then enemy players will be notified and have a chance to personally come and stop you. The biggest downside of FOB is that attacking is far more difficult than defending. Thanks to your security team, gear you've developed and created and your security measures you've arranged back at Mother Base, you can cause a whole host of pain for invading players. Metal Gear Online 3 is a different beast. It again is as smooth as the main Metal Gear Solid 5 for Phantom Pain game. It is divided up into different competitive modes. You have Bounty Hunter, a kind of elimination team deathmatch where teams kill opposing players to deplete their tickets. However, there is a nice twist to this mode. Every time a player gets a kill, a bounty point is added to that player. The more kills, the more points that player gains. The more points you get, the higher value target you become. This is because you can Fulton, extract and capture opponents in MGO3. Capturing opponent players will add players' bounty points to their team's tickets. So, a team can potentially turn the tide by extracting the right enemy target. You have Com Control, a King of the Hill kind of domination game mode where players fight over three control points across the map. And last is Cloak and Dagger, a take on Seek and Destroy from Call of Duty. One team defends data disks from being stolen, whilst the other team tries to steal them and then upload them at different locations on the map. The difference is that the attackers are limited to non-lethal weaponry, but have access to stealth camouflage, while the defenders have only lethal weapons. This can make things very tense, as each player only has one life. MGO3 also adds classes, each player slightly different thanks to the gear they have available to them. You have the Infiltrator who specialises in close combat, stealth and fault and recovery, but they come with very low health. You have the Scout who is an all-rounder with expertise in marking and sniping. And finally, you have the Enforcer, who is a soldier type class. They have the heavier weaponry and gear, but are slow when compared to the other classes. You of course can mix and match the classes and gear as you level up your characters. At first I was concerned that everyone would be running around with guns blazing, but throughout my time playing I've noticed that each class plays their role well. The biggest issue with MGO3 is that sometimes there are issues with maps being unbalanced, there is odd lag issues here and there, and the occasional spawn camping. There is also currently an issue when you come to play matches with friends. As I found more often than not, I was placed in the opposite team from my friend, which can be slightly annoying and I hope they address in time. That being said, these issues shouldn't detract from your experience of the online mode. The presentation for both of these online modes are crisp and clear. 
much like the main game. Animation of characters is captured with smooth movement. Character models are detailed even if you don't spend a lot of time close up to them. Environments are both hit and miss. Some areas look detailed and filled with life, while others can be grey and dull. However, even these grey and dull areas can change thanks to the time of day and weather effects that occur at times. The music is also worth a mention, more so in MGO3, as it brings back tracks from previous games for both calm phases and intense ones. I couldn't help but smile while playing MGO3 to the original MGS soundtrack. Overall, Metal Gear Solid V The Phantom Pain's FOB sections are a fun distraction but become increasingly hard as more players level up their mother bases and forward operating bases. Trying to sneak into a heavily fortified platform with little room for error will frustrate some players, but saying that, if you manage to do it, you will actually feel like a badass. Metal Gear Online 3 is a good experience with plenty of fun to be had once you've found a class that suits your playstyle. This may take a while, but once you've found your footing and found gear that works for you, then you will start enjoying yourself a little bit more. I really enjoyed the small class system they introduced to the mode that allowed for different roles to be played on the battlefield. The biggest downside though with Metal Gear Online 3 is that playing on your own will sometimes result in a lot of losses when compared to if you play with a group of friends as long as you get on the same side. For both of these modes, the greatest aspect is the gameplay. Your characters are so responsive, allowing you for freedom in your playstyle. You can blame your teammates or lag for a bad match, but rarely will you be complaining about the gameplay. That all being said, there is a dark side to these modes, and that is the lifespan. As players get better gear, better mother bases, I can see the FOB mode decreasing in players taking part. Also, if Metal Gear Online 3 isn't supported by its community and updated at times by Konami, then I can see the player counts dropping. There is also the fear of Konami not keeping servers running, as this is what happened to previous Metal Gear Online installments. I hope this doesn't happen, not at least until the game has had a fair few years under its belt. I personally enjoyed Metal Gear Online 3 over the FOB missions. It has a fun take on classes and game modes that allow for running and gunning as well as taking on matches with a stealth approach, allowing for a multiplayer game that caters for many players. Anyway, I've been Darkblade bringing you my video review of Metal Gear Online 3 and the FOB missions in Metal Gear Solid 5 The Phantom Pain. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more. Wormhole available. has been placed on you. One minute remaining. Wind. 